I've been asked a few times how I find my references from Pinterest and um, I really just, I just go on Pinterest and I feel like after you have saved a few things that are kind of your style, it gives you more and more good references. But I just wanted to show you like, this is generally what my Pinterest feed looks like. And so anytime I like one of the pictures, I'll pin it. And if I really like the style of it, I'll look at the related pictures. And usually I'll find other pictures that I like just as much and I'll pin all of them. Um, I like to pin for inspiration, but then also for references. I should split them up, but I keep it all on the same board. Um, this is the reference that I'm gonna be using in my uh, sketchbook today. But going down from here, I like all of these references. Like I have saved multiple of them already, but I think that this is really, really helpful because if you like the style of a portrait or of a picture, um, you can easily find a lot more of the same kinds. So that's how I find my references. If you like my references and want to use the same ones, you can uh, follow my art inspo board on Pinterest. It's a lot of portraiture and everything kind of follows a similar vibe. So I'm gonna be filming this voiceover outside. So I hope that the little sounds around me is nice and not distracting, but I'm using a moleskin sketchbook that I had gotten embossed at the moleskin store. I was sent these watercolors, these tubed watercolors from a brand that's owned by Paul Rubens, but it's a new watercolor brand. Um, and they sent them to me to try them out and let you guys know how they work. I'm not getting paid to um, give you my opinion. It's just my honest review of them. So I wanted to use them in this sketchbook. Um, the moleskin sketchbooks aren't like the best for watercolor, but I figure it kind of shows how good they are if they will look good in this sketchbook. Um, so I use them on the Stay Wet palette and my review of them is they're really good. I feel like um, they're not like anything particularly special. I noticed that um, some of the colors are a lot more vibrant than others and a lot more opaque than others. I noticed that the brown shades are a bit more transparent and the um, reds and purples were extremely uh, pigmented which is really cool. I feel like, you know, the brown shades, like, I wish they were a bit more opaque just because that helps so much with shadowing and things like that. But overall, this is definitely a good set if you are in the market for um, not the most expensive, but good quality watercolors, I would recommend them. And I'll put in a, a link in the description, but it is an affiliate link just to be transparent. So if you do order through that link, I make like a small commission off of it. Um, but yeah, I think that they are definitely worth the price. They're not the most expensive watercolors and um, having a set of tubed watercolors is pretty nice, especially um, if you paint a lot from home because you could get really vibrant colors if they're not dried down. So I have been looking at different older sketchbooks to kind of take inspiration from them. And um, I took this page's inspiration from a reference photo from Pinterest, but also um, one of my older sketchbooks. And in all honesty, like I really did struggle with this page and I honestly don't love the way it turned out. I feel like that I say that about a lot of the things I do on YouTube, but I feel like when I film the process, like it never goes as good as when I'm like fully, you know, immersed in it, which is unfortunate. Um, but I was going to make it like a gouache portrait, but once I started, I could just tell that I like wasn't going to be able to execute it well. So I, I switched over to colored pencil. I'm definitely like the strongest at drawing more than painting, even though I paint a lot. Um, I've been drawing way longer, and so I feel like 
colored pencils sometimes is like a comfort zone because I can control it a bit more. But even with this portrait, I still struggled even with doing the colored pencil. So I don't know. It was just, I haven't been in the most creative mood. It actually took me almost a month to start the sketchbook after I finished my last one. And starting off with like a realistic portrait probably wasn't the best idea. But um, I definitely am out of my routine and I'm trying to work my way back into it. But I haven't really been happy with much of the art that I've been making like for myself. I'm okay with like what I've been making for my clients and things like that, but um, personal art I haven't been really happy with. So I definitely hope that the process of this sketchbook, like I can kind of get back into my routine and maybe by the next one that I start, I can be really creatively inspired again. And um, those are things that I hope for. But for now, this was still a good practice. I hate that it's the first page of this book just because I don't really like the way it looks and the next few pages I like a lot better. To me, the first few pages of a sketchbook really, really sets the tone to see if I will have enough motivation to kind of continue on with strong practice within the sketchbook, which is kind of silly because it like, I really do have a strange relationship with like art making in book form just because I do like put a lot of pressure to make everything look really good and the purpose of it is for practice and so I, I definitely struggle with trying to just like be loose and and have it be for practice but if I hate everything in that book I like don't put a lot of effort into the practice that goes into it. I don't know if that makes sense but it's something that I notice with all of my sketchbooks. If I started off really strong and I really like the artwork that I've made in it so far, I have a lot more motivation to make like quality art going forward in it. I hope you guys enjoy watching the process. If you have been feeling a little bit creatively burnt out, comment about what's been helping you or just simply like how you're feeling. Um, I, I feel like it's a strange thing when you do this full time just because when you have a job that's a little bit more like structured, it's okay if you don't always want to be there, you could get the work done. But when you have a creative job, if you don't feel creative, you kind of don't have any quality work coming out. And um, that's been a little bit of a strange thing for me to get used to. Um, but yeah, if you have any tips or if you relate to that at all, comment about it. And I hope you guys are having a good day. I hope you enjoy this video. And uh, if you enjoyed these videos, please subscribe, like the video, share it if you have any artsy friends that you think would like it. And I will see you in the next video.